Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, this is the EU US time edition, uh, and it is February 8th. Uh, today, at the moment, we have myself and uh, Kevin Martins and Bruno Varashtin. If Mark joins us, he's in the, uh, another meeting right now, but uh, we'll greet Mark when he comes and if anyone else shows up as well. Uh, for the agenda today, so uh, I wanted to recap FOSDEM a little bit. Um, we'll have more on that uh, to come, but just thought we'd give a nice update on that. Uh, Jenkins Awards recently, uh, contributor spotlight updates, uh, the upcoming Jenkins Community Awards that um, have been announced and are open for nominations. Uh, Alex Brandes updated a, provided a new Pride logo, so uh, fantastic news there. Uh, next LTS release news and updates, uh, recaps on the Maven and Python tutorial updates, uh, the related pages in 404 errors, which was something that was done by a new contributor recently. Um, some, up, some notes on the version documentation, sponsor attributes, and GSOC 2024 prep. Uh, is there anything else that you'd want to see on the agenda, Bruno, or does that cover talking points for you? Uh, that covers pretty much everything. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, sure. Um, if anything, you know, feel free to shout out. Thank but, you. Yeah. Uh, so again, so FOSDEM 2024 happened this past weekend out in Brussels. Uh, we also had the Jenkins Contributor Summit the day before. Um, so first of all, thanks to Jean-Marc Maison for uh, acquiring the room and making the Contributor Summit even possible in the first place. Thanks to Beta Cowork for providing the room. Uh, and thanks to everyone that showed up. I mean, uh, we had a room full of uh, Jenkins related individuals in one way, shape or form. Uh, there was just great vibes, constant conversations, really lovely presentations from the various officers and board members. Um, and ultimately we got a lot of not only great discussion, but a lot of great work done after the presentations because we had uh, shared group coding sessions, which, um, uh, First of all, wouldn't have been possible uh, in any other capacity as we are global and uh, all based in various places, uh, but uh, ultimately really yielded results almost immediately, which is, is really fascinating just to know that uh, we had that possibility. We came into the room, people were talking and working and just ideas flying immediately. So re really fantastic results of that and um, just really heartening to see how we were able to collaborate and produce immediately. So. Really fantastic there. And welcome, Mark. Hi. Hi. Um, just talking about FOSM 2024, the contributor summits and booths and stuff. Um, speaking of the booth, so that was uh, very eventful. We had a lot of visitors all weekend, uh, constantly staffed, constant people coming up, wanting, having questions, wanting to talk about Jenkins, um, their experiences with Jenkins, how uh, they have used Jenkins in the past and maybe their work doesn't allow them to at this point in time and how they want to go back to it, all sorts of different things. Just great, great, great perspective. Um, lots of really good conversations. Uh, we were able to sell out out of most of the Jenkins t-shirts and a lot of the stickers were gone. So just, um, uh, just the amount of foot traffic alone really uh, is inspiring in that sense. Uh, and then we'll have a blog recap, uh, post-mortem, whatever you want to think of it as. Uh, soon to come. We're just gathering all the uh, experiences and responses from the team and uh, other individuals so that we can have a really nice um, encapsulation of everything. So uh, more to come on FOSM 2024, but just a really lovely experience overall. Uh, and thanks to having everyone in the same place at the same time, just a lot of great uh, progress work development done. So thanks to everyone who was able to come and participate. And Special thanks to Bruno Verachten for Rounder Netties. I, I like that oh, name. It's a great, thank you, Mark. great device. And to to Bruno actually acted as our gathering point for almost a thousand dollars donated to the Jenkins project. And I see it; it's visible on crowdfunding already. Thanks very much. Thanks to the contributors who gave us <laughs> this amount of money. Uh, the t-shirts were selling like hotcakes. Yeah, we only had mediums left. So yeah, everyone was pretty happy with that. And yeah. uh, and and thanks to CloudBees for donating the t-shirts. And to Alyssa so. Tong for getting them delivered all the way from her home in California, all the way to Brussels, Belgium, so that they could be sold. Yes, quite the effort of, effort of coordination this weekend. Um, Wow, that was a that was a large part of it. Yeah, the coordination was key. So yeah, thanks to everyone again.
really fantastic. And again, we'll have more uh, more on that to come. Uh, next up, so uh, Jenkins was recently announced as the winner of the DevOps Dozen Award for Most Innovative DevOps Open Source Project. Uh, this is fantastic news to hear. We're very happy to share uh, this this award. We've got it updated on the Jenkins Awards page. Um, and just thanks to Alyssa for uh, getting us involved in this and organizing and submitting uh, for us because uh, without the, but without her efforts, we wouldn't have been able, been part of it in the first place. Um, and it's fantastic. I think we got somewhere around 30% uh, or uh, more of all votes. So it's really inspiring to just see how much support Jenkins was getting in this process and all through the voting. Um, and then there was another uh, award that was um, given to Jenkins by AWS. And uh, it's not listed here, but the AWS award also comes with $60,000 uh, worth of credits for Jenkins, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, so Kevin, is, Kevin oh, sorry, for ahead, precision, Mark. sorry, for precision yeah. here, that's, that's just a donation from them. So they didn't, there isn't any specific title on it. They've just donated 60,000 to the Jenkins project. Got it. Okay. Perfect. So they've Thank they've you, given, fair. they've given 60,000 thus awarded uh, mm -hmm. past tense verb. Got it. Perfect. Thank you very much for the clarification and exactness. Um, fantastic news for us as a uh, for Jenkins as a project. Uh, that's that's sixty thousand uh, dollars worth of credits that CloudBees does not have to provide now. We have AWS to uh, thank for all of that and just wonderful wonderful uh, news all around. Thanks to AWS for supporting the Jenkins project. Yes. Uh, so next up on the contributor spotlight. So uh, Valentin Delay was just published yesterday. And so um, if anyone hasn't gotten a chance to read about Valentin, he's a uh, Jenkins contributor, plugin maintainer. Uh, really fantastic to be able to meet Valentin at the contributor summit as well. So uh, thanks to him for being there, participating, joining us there. And um, yeah, we'll have more contributors to spotlight as we continue on. Uh, we have the next couple of months planned out for the time being, and I have to go and submit the pull request for the next few contributors to make sure that they are uh, in the pipeline ready to go. So uh, more to come with that. And again, thanks as always to the contributors for their collaboration and work that they've been able to meet and uh, just be candid uh, regarding the contributor spotlight. Uh, next on the agenda is the Jenkins Community Awards. So this was uh, posted uh, last week in a blog post. Thanks to Alyssa Tong for writing this up. Um, we've got the 2024 edition of the Jenkins Contributor Awards. So um, this is the same as last year where we have the most valuable Jenkins contributor, most valuable Jenkins advocate, and Jenkins security MVP. Uh, so nominations are currently open and you can use uh, the corresponding link for each separate award. Um, and it has all the uh, corresponding information about the award. Uh, and things to note is that lap previous year's winners are not eligible to win for this year. Uh, and uh, however, if it was a year prior, they're eligible once again. And then the nomination deadline is uh, Monday, February 19th, 2024. So if there's someone you have in mind, uh, by all means, go in, go ahead and comment. And uh, we're yeah, going to go off comments, off uh, reactions to the comments. We're going to get uh, all that figured out for the nominations themselves and then uh, proceed with voting and everything from there on out. Uh, and then just the same as last year, winners will be announced uh, at CDCon 2024 this year. Uh, and so for uh, the Jenkins contributor, um, uh, yeah, that would be Jan Varchek was last year's winner. So uh, Jan's not eligible this year. Uh, for Jenkins Advocate, I think it was, yeah, Mark Wait is unfortunately ineligible for the most valuable advocate this year. Um, still the biggest one in my heart. So that's always there. Uh, and then Security MVP was Daniel Beck last year. So Daniel's not eligible this year. Um, but uh, as with all the uh, awards, there are very, very valid candidates that are out there for every one of these. And so uh, it's up to us to make sure they get nominated. Uh, ne the next item on the agenda is uh, Alexander Brandes actually submitted a new Pride logo. So this one updated the logo 
uh, from the uh, existing pride flag to be a little bit more inclusive uh, and an updated flag art here. Really nice, really uh, just great to have an updated version. So thanks to Alex for that. Uh, LTS 2.440.1 is set to release on February 21st. Um, I'm currently working on the changelog and upgrade guide for that. Uh, and I still need to submit the pull request for that, but I've got everything compiled and I'm going through and reviewing the entries now for what should be included. Uh, and then uh, in addition to that, the release candidate was actually made available yesterday in the developer mailing list. So that is now available. Uh, please go ahead and grab that test out, uh, do whatever review you feel like doing. If there's any issues, please raise them. Um, and we have the backporting ticket as well, where those uh, candidates are gonna be living for the time being. Uh, we also had uh, weekly 2.444 release on this past Tuesday. So the change log is available as well. Uh, and everything seems to have went smoothly there. So everything's looking good there on that front. Uh, and then we've been discussing the Maven and Python tutorial revamps. Uh, these now include Docker Compose instructions. Thanks to Bruno Vrachton for implementing that. Uh, and uh, this has been great. Docker Compose is a uh, better overall uh, uh, solution to the Docker and Docker. And so this is much safer, much more streamlined and easier to set up and configure and then run. So just fantastic uh, overall there. And then uh, eventually we'll be looking to incorporate the Docker Compose instructions into the actual installation docs. Um, and so uh, eventually we'll, Bruno and I will take a look at that. He'll show me the ropes and I'll uh, work on, I'll be working on that. Uh, yeah. uh, Bruno, any notes on the Docker Compose stuff? Um, not really. I saw earlier today on uh, Gitter that some people were still using the um, uh, install Jenkins on top of Docker uh, tutorial on the website. And even if it's not really secure and really not up to date, it's still working. So we're in a hurry, but it's not urgent. We'll work on that. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, and then the next up on the list. So this is some, um, so this item here, this related pages in 404, uh, this is something from a newer contributor. Uh, so thanks very much uh, to Shridhar, I think. Yeah, Shridhar for uh, putting this together. Uh, so what they've done is they've made it so that the 404 page now uh, will actually give you a list of related pages from your search. Um, so I forget off the top of my head how to actually uh, trigger this in page, but uh, we have the preview here. So uh, you'd get a 404 and then you can search for related pages here. The search would actually contain what you might have already searched for. And if you didn't search for anything specific to be brought here, it would list related pages based on content. Um, so that just fantastic to see. Um, thank you very much for, to Shridhar for uh, submitting that and put, doing all that work and collaborating with the rest of the community, um, Chris Aaron and others uh, voicing concerns, comments and issues. So just really fantastic collaboration all around. And um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, for the version documentation site of Jenkins.io, so um, no changes since the last time we talked. It's been delayed a little bit uh, due to uh, for us to check in on the Azure cost savings and make sure that that's in order before we uh, continue pushing the version documentation into the infra. So uh, the issue has been created. We're in the process of setting that up, but um, just pushing off. We're holding off on a little bit for now. Uh, now that January is over, Von D should have more times without exams have to have to worry about. So um, there should be more progress made there uh, soon, but yeah, everything's looking okay there. Uh, and then at the contributor summit and uh, over the course of FOSDEM, I was able to talk with Daniel Beck, who's part of the security team about some of the uh, questions that they have about their processes, making sure that security advisories are still published uh, uh, properly and clearly, and um, ensuring that anything that they need to do can be done uh, efficiently for them. So um, these are things that I'm actually going to do a little bit more research in and make sure that we can have a, a good constructive conversation uh, with Chris, with the security team, with everyone involved, so that, um, they're, that it, we can put that to rest.
uh, for the sponsor attributions page. So again, something we've been discussing. Um, the long and short is Jay Frog asked about being accredited uh, or uh, attributed as a sponsor for Jenkins, which absolutely they deserve to be. They are, um, but we want to make sure that we're we're attributing their sponsorship accurately. And so uh, Basil has gone ahead and created a sponsors page uh, in a as a draft. And the page will have uh, the various levels of sponsorship that Jenkins uh, receives and the associated uh, partners in each level. Um, so Anchor would be something like CloudBees where it's a very heavily sponsor, uh, heavy sponsor of the project um, where the gold, silver, and bronze will be the various tiers according to monetary value, mirrors or something separately uh, separate from that entirely, and it is a different form of sponsorship. So those will have a separate section as well. Um, but yeah, things are looking good here. Um, it's just a matter of making sure that the sponsorships are uh, correct and accurate for current uh, time and, and situations. Um, that, uh, that being said, uh, Red Hat uh, is no longer a sponsor as they're not part of the uh, CD Foundation specifically anymore. So we've removed them. Digital Ocean has still be is still donating, so they're going to be visible. Oracle stopped donating, so we need to make sure they're not visible on that page. Um, so there's just some fine tuning that needs to happen more than anything else at this point. Uh, and Basil's already got the draft of this and everything set up. So um, yeah, it's more just. Uh, completing it at that point. Uh, and then the last thing that I had on the agenda for today was just uh, GSOC 2024 preparation still going strong. Uh, we had the contributor session, the contributor roundup uh, just prior to FOSTEM on the 25th. There was more than 20 people attending, lots of questions, uh, lots of activity in the Gitter channel. So uh, overall participation was looking great. Um, and I know, uh, Bruno, you, Alyssa, and John Mark were able to attend a GSOC meetup or event. I forget what it was called on uh, over the Foston weekend. Is there anything you'd want to share or note about GSOC 2024 while we're talking? Um, in fact, nothing really happened during that uh, dinner. We just discussed with other GSOC organizations. And that was pretty cool because we had the same feelings about um, how, what kind of contributors we have, how hard or easy is it uh, to work with these contributors. Um, you know, the numbers of um, mentors per project. So, on. so it was cool to see that it's not only Jenkins sometimes struggling uh, with uh, contributors, uh, but it, it's the same for everybody. We also uh, discussed with some um, new contributors uh, which was also interesting. But yeah, we got nothing new from Google. Um, yeah, it was a nice uh, nice evening, but that's all. Uh, Alice had managed to get us um, subscribed to GSOC. I know it's not the right term, but you will get it better later on. So I think we're still waiting for the answer from Google, but uh, we told Google we are interested, and I don't know when we'll get the answer. Very cool. Um, and then, so we'll, yeah, more to come on that, Ben, in that case. Yep. And then, um, yeah, so I, I know that we've been talking a little bit about uh, potentially getting more mentors, if we can get more mentors. I know the call for mentors blog post is out there. Uh, we've got about 10 volunteered. Um, and I saw that Chris Stern and uh, you, Bruno, had uh, updated the projects page and everything. I know that we're getting ready for the organization uh, yeah. application, essentially. So, um, any other any other news there? Anything else we can do in the meantime? No, I don't think so. Okay, that works. Great, thank you very much. Appreciate it. No one. Okay, uh, and so that brings us to the end of the agenda that I laid out here for us. Um, Mark, Bruno, is there anything else you'd want to talk about? No, uh, today. We no before. other hot topics for me. Okay. All right. Well, uh, in that case, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap things up. We'll stop the recording. It'll be available in about 24 to 48 hours. And uh, as always, thank you very much for joining. 
And uh, yeah, have a nice week. We'll see you then. Take care. Bye. Bye.